Hi friends! Today is going to be a wrap up of reading the favorite books of the Adventures Initiative Reading Challenge hosts. If you are not aware, the Avengers Initiative Reading Challenge is a challenge that I have been doing all year. There are five hosts. They're amazing. They're wonderful. They created this entire world of us being able to re-watch all of the Marvel movies together and then creating character boards that have prompts on them that you read books that fill the prompts and there's challenges. There's a whole lot of stuff that goes on. I'm having a great time. And one of the best things is I got to join the hosts in the big boss battle there was like team of three and a team of three and we each had to like say three of our favorite books and people got bonus points for reading our favorite books and I was like well now I have this knowledge of information and I want to read as many favorites as possible and get all of the points I should reread one of my favorites and then also read one favorite from each of the other hosts so I did it of the six favorites we should start with my favorite. The favorite of my own that I chose was The Bookish Life of Nina Hill, which I love this book so much, hence why it was on my favorites. Um, I originally gave this a 4.75 out of 5 stars. I think it stands to that. It is an adult romance that is like, it's kind of like a hate to love, kind of like a vague enemies to lovers, but uh, it's great. But more than that, this book heavily focuses on Nina learning um, after her father's passing, who her father is, because she has grown up her whole life not knowing that her mom actually knew who her father was. She's always just been told, oh, I don't know, it's some guy. And her father dies, and he had a lot of money and a lot of heirs. He was very elderly and had had children for decades. So he had, like, some children were in their 50s and some were in their preteens. So, large span of children over many many years so she gets this extended family and I have waxed poetically about this book a lot but one of my favorite absolute absolute favorite things about this book besides the romance and just Nina in general is the idea of Nina getting to learn who her father is through the viewpoint of everyone who knew him and because we as people change over time Every experience that we have is different. Every person that we're with, um, you know, creates a different part to our persona. She gets to see so many different facets of him. And she learns that this one person is not the same person to all people. And, you know, so his older children, he kind of neglected. But his younger daughter, he was her whole world. And it's because he learned things about himself. He learned things about life as time went on. And he was a much better father later in life than he was early in life. And there was just, it really is about learning that people evolve, people change, people become different throughout their lives based off of outside influences. Uh, is absolutely one of my favorite things about this book that I just adore. That whole plot line is great. There's also a plot line about uh, the bookstore that she works for is possibly closing and there's like this riot in the town. It is a fantastic time. I absolutely love this book and I highly recommend it. I was on team Brie. So I had Brianna and Brie on my team. Brianna who is at Four Pauls in a Book and I will link all of the girls down below. The favorite of hers that I picked was All the Impossible Things by Lindsay Lackey. I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. It was fantastic. This book follows Red who is in her preteen years. I think she's like 11 or 12 or 13. So she may be a young teen but around preteen age and she has lived the past few years of her life in foster care and when we first meet her she is uh, being taken from one foster care home to another and throughout the book you get little snippets of kind of like how poorly the previous foster care home was to her and you see like how amazing the foster parents are that she has now but Red doesn't really care because she knows that her mother is you know only got so many days left in jail and her mother's gonna get better and she's gonna come get her and they're gonna be a family again and it really is about like Red kind of forcing these people away from her even though 
they really just want to be there for her. You know, they're not trying to replace her parents or her family. They just want to help her and to, to let her be a part of their family. Red has this notebook that she has taken with her through all of her homes um, and it's got this list of all the impossible things and it's this thing that she used to do with her grandmother where they would um, do research and kind of learn about things that people thought were impossible like climbing Mount Everest. People thought that was impossible but someone overcome that. They would like do research on what people overcame, how they overcame it, you know, what made these things possible when people thought they were impossible for so long. And so one of her impossible things was just her mom getting better and and being there for her even though her mom had um, some drug addiction problems and was not the best role model for her. And Red also in this weird twist of it being vaguely paranormal, sci-fi, whatever you want to call it, uh, it's very fantasy light. Red's emotions kind of impact the weather and so there's like a whole plot line revolving around that as well. I really enjoyed this book. I think the characters were so well done. I love mid-grade especially does a fantastic job of really just pinpointing characters and what makes them special and it just mid-grade always like hits me in the feels and I as an adult as a 34 year old woman there's just something special about mid-grade and this book definitely had it. Brie's favorite was The Curiosities which was a collection of short stories by Tessa Gratton, Maggie Steve Otter, somebody else. Every time I talk about this I forget who the third person is. I've looked it up a bajillion times but I never remember. Uh, I DNF'd that at 13%. I was not having a good time. The stories were real short. Some of them were like just a couple pages and I just I felt like I was reading nothing like it was a I don't want to say a waste of time but it was like there wasn't enough there to like to me for me to get invested so it was just like it was kind of like scrolling through reels for three hours you know what I mean or through TikTok or whatever like it's just like a flash and then it's gone and it's completely out of your brain and so for me that just not work for me. And then the other three girls, uh, Michelle from Thor Wants Another Letter. I read Winter Counts by David Heska Wombly Wyden. I gave that a four out of five stars. This book follows a man who lives on a reservation. He is indigenous. He has always been known to be like this enforcer, this person that if you had somebody that needed payback, he was the guy you called and paid to take the vengeance that you needed to have taken and he has taken in his nephew because his sister has passed away and he takes in his nephew and he finds out through his nephew and some actions that are going on that there is like this big drug ring in his town and he's trying to eliminate this drug ring and there's like a lot of political things in there and socioeconomical things. Um, it is from what I understand a very realistic viewpoint of what things are like on some reservations and in that aspect I I don't want to say I really enjoyed it because who enjoys seeing people living in that manner when I am so fortunate to not live in that manner. I like the experience of getting to learn about other people and to know what's going on around me in the world. I like knowing that I'm lucky to have what I have because of being able to see what others are dealing with. So from that aspect I think it was done very well. Um, the plot was very straightforward and put together. I think that there was like this mystery aspect to it uh, that I enjoyed as far as like trying to figure out who the bad guy really was which I kind of figured out early on but also there was like some twists and turns in there that kind of kind of started to throw you off a loop a little bit uh, but, but I enjoyed. I did really enjoy that book. I would definitely pick up more from this author in the future um, just because I liked his writing style. Margaret's favorite at Margaret at the Word Nerd. Her favorite one of them that I picked was Lazaretto by Diane McKenney Whetstone and I DNF'd that at like 33%. So this book takes place around the assassination of Lincoln and also like 
the time period directly after that but also I think we were up to like a decade after and there was a lot of people and a lot of things interconnected and there was just I was really bored like super bored like I was a third of the way through the book and I hadn't really even gotten to anything that was on the blurb on the back of the book like everything up to that point was really just like backstory and I just I didn't care at that point like I, I wasn't it wasn't for me it just wasn't for me so I bounced I think that's fair and then the last book that we're going to talk about was Christine's favorite uh, from the other Christine that reads and it was Butter Honey Pig Bread by Francesca Iquayazzi and I did not rate this book. I did finish it but I did not rate it. I talked about that a little bit in last month's wrap up because I did read it last month but I want to go over that again for this video specifically. Um, Butter Honey Pig Bread is set in Nigeria for the most part and follows a mother and two daughters and kind of talks about their life. The two daughters um, one was had a bad thing happen to her in their childhood and I'll say that because that's what the book says uh, the blurb on the book a bad thing happened to her the other sister the, the family doesn't really talk about what happened to her and it kind of separates them all the thing about this book that did not work for me is it is very time jumpy as far as like you'll be in the mother's infancy and then the next thing you know you're in like the adult of the daughters and then you're in like the daughters 10 years prior and then you're in like mother present day and then mother as a child and then the kids as children and then the kids as adults and then the mother again i'm not clinically like stated to have adhd or dyslexia um but i have symptoms of both and i know that both of those things can affect the way that you view and order sequences of events. Because of that I really struggled putting the story together in an order that made sense. And like I know that it's broken up so it's not necessarily supposed to be in an order that makes sense but I had a really hard time connecting to it because I wasn't able to like get all of the facts at the time. Now in the moment in that chapter reading you know each part individually I loved it. I loved um seen these moments of these women and their important life moments as well as the quiet life moments. Um, one of the girls is a cook so there's even like recipes included like in the actual text of the book that I thought was fantastic. It was so well done. I really enjoyed seeing these women and all of these important things that have happened to them and how they were able to grow as people and come back together um, in present day and just like how this whole thing worked out really worked for me. I really enjoyed it but overall I feel like had I rated the story based off of my rating scale it probably would have been like a 3 or 2.5 because of my lack of connection and the confusion throughout the book and because I feel like this book is very important for people like me to see outside of their own perspective. I didn't want to give it a low rating and to be you know because um, like I wasn't bored like I was having a good time it wasn't like I ever set the book down and didn't want to pick it back up. I didn't like there was no moment where I was like I want to DNF this like I was in it the whole time but I just I knew it wouldn't favor well on my rating scale so I chose not to rate it um, based off of it being an issue with my brain and how my brain works rather than an issue with the book itself. So those are the six books that I attempted to read that were Avengers Initiative reading challenge favorites. If you've read any of these and you would like to discuss them let me know in the comments below because I love to talk about books that's why we're here. That is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related videos a couple of times a week. If you don't want to miss anything I have going in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye!